Hello! Welcome to my channel. My name is Kati and today I'm going to show you how I did my newest dividers for my personal rings. And I don't know why my videos usually end up being like an example of don't do this, do something else, but I think that also has value. So if I make a mistake and break something and realize what doesn't work, so you don't have to try it, right? So first here I'm doing a page lifter out of cork fabric. I just thought that it would look nice and now that I have used it I can at least say that it feels nice. So here first I measure the fabric. So I decided because personal size if I talk in centimeters is for me 9.5 centimeters wide and 17.1 centimeters high. So I made my page lifter the exact height, but I did it 11 centimeters wide, so 1.5 centimeters wider. Then after cutting it's time to make the holes and this was uh, a disaster. So I tried first these punch pliers and they said on a package that they would work for leather and fabric and everything, but I couldn't get them to work on this cork fabric. I just, I didn't get the hole through the cork fabric and I can't recommend those, but maybe, maybe they could work, but mine didn't. Then I decided to take my normal two-hole punch in use, but that was a mistake because that didn't work either and I actually broke the punch, so the locking mechanism broke. So then I grabbed these, this one-hole punch that I bought recently and that worked like somehow. So I had to cut the pieces the rest of it with scissors, but at least I got the holes. But this was such an hassle that ah, oh, I hated it. <laughs> and then I wanted to still round the corners and then I just traced the rounding and did it with scissors with not such a big hassle. And then my page lifter was done. Then it was time to make my dividers. So I had cut a tracing paper into the normal page size, so 9.5 times 17.1 centimeters. And I punched them and rounded the corners. And this was actually the easiest and quickest part of this whole thing. <laughs> but then I had one divider that was 10 centimeters wide and that will be my weekly divider and that I wanted to do with a nice holographic foil as you can see here so the tab will be the full height and I'm just cutting a slice and this is like an A5 writing board with a 5 millimeter grid so I used that to help me to get the tabs in the right place. And this is something different that I tried this time. So last time I did my dividers, I cut also the tab from the paper and then just put the sticker on it. But now I just cut the divider and decided to make the tab just out of the sticker paper. And here I'm measuring how big I want the tab to be and why I'm making this new is that I wanted them to be wider, so bigger tabs with my new personal rings planner. Here I first cut the tabs, so I will make them 3.5 centimeters high and 5 centimeters wide. So 
that I have one centimeter on the divider and then 1.5 centimeters as the tab. And I decided to use my paper cutter because it has the centimeters there so I could use that as a measurement. Previously I think I have just when I didn't have this paper cutter and I just measured the right size on the sticker paper and then cut it with scissors. Then to the tough part, so how to get the tabs in the right place and straight and oof. So the first one I thought it's easy because you just put it on the top but it wasn't so easy, but then making these I learned how I should do it, so the next one will be easier. This is just a struggle and you can see that I didn't get it like straight in the middle. But then I realized that I should just mark the right place on the divider. So just make a small mark so I know where to put the sticker. Then I should fold the tab in half as you can see me doing here and then I just line it in the right place and put one centimeter under the divider and then just fold it and it's there in the right place but this as you can see I just it just was hard <laughs> first to get the sticker there to hold and then I was aiming this divider on it and uh, and I just I would like them to be like perfect but it's it's hard but yeah you do it yourself and save money and get something that you have done yourself. <laughs> I'm still aiming. Oh, it's so hard to get the sticker to stay in place, but eventually I will be satisfied with the result. So then I just fold it in half and voila, I have a tab. And here you can see the old ones that I did differently but I decided that it will probably be good enough for just to be like a square and don't have those side things and yeah I just make it more simple this time and then the rest of the tabs I do this way so mark the place fold it in half and then aim it in place and then in the end I will have my six nice dividers. Previously I had five dividers because I have five colors of those sticker papers but then I got my holographic foil so I added one tab more. And this is just taking me so much time that I'm aiming these tabs in place but when you have done it, you have your tab, so it's worth taking the time. And this whole thing that I'm showing you now, making these page lifters and dividers and everything, took me two hours. My tabs are ready, I have my nice new dividers, I'm happy about them. And then it's time for the most tedious, no, well yeah. So here in this part I have gotten my biggest lesson I would say. So I'm making like see-through dividers out of laminating paper and here I'm showing you the tracing pad I made those dividers of. So I have laminated the sheets and now I'm cutting them in those sizes that you see there. So I use these like page markers to mark for the most important pages in my personal rings. I make one with a top tab, one with a bottom tab and then a few with a bigger side tab and then I also cut some smaller page markers. And here 
my tip for cutting these is that don't use the plate that you use with paper. I use my oldest plate with the laminating sheets because those make your plates dull. So save your better plates for cutting paper and then use an older one for cutting laminating sheets. That's one tip and lesson I have <laughs> learned. Then my second lesson is save your nerves, save your time, buy two six hole punches. I'm so sad that I didn't buy two of those Rapesco punches, but of course I didn't know before I received it if I even like it. But now that I know that I like it, I want to buy a second one for the same reason. I'm using one for punching paper and then the second one for punching anything else because I'm afraid of using my punch now to cut laminating sheets because I know that anything else goes bad when I cut laminated sheets so I don't have the courage now to use my Rapesco for that because I will be then so sad if I don't have a good punch to punch my papers. And yes I have also ruined some corner rounders so that's the reason why I'm rounding these corners with scissors and I decided it's easiest to just put the page there to help me cut and it will be like okay it's not perfect it's okay and then I just slit the imperfect <laughs> holes to get these easily out and in in my planner and then it's time to make a new front page so I love this forest paper which I have used previously but it's a little small because I cut it in the same size as the pages so I'm making this now just a half centimeter wider as the normal page and then of course I laminate it so there will be a few millimeters more but because it's half a centimeter wider it should cover the pages that come after and then when I open my planner I just see this lovely page and my tabs and then I punch it with my six hole punch around the inner corners and then it's time to laminate it and I have a 80 micron sheet and this is just a regular laminating machine. I, I don't recommend these because I don't know so much about this that I could recommend a brand. These are just the cheapest laminating sheets that I have found. Just check that you don't have anything extra between <laughs> your laminating sheet so no hair or anything and put the closed side first in the machine. Then I again take my bad cutting plate and cut the laminated piece and it's important that you don't cut it right beside or like right where the paper is you have to leave at least I leave about two or three millimeters so that the laminating sheet doesn't open up so you have to leave there something even though it doesn't look so nice then then I cut the holes with my one hole punch and then put it still through the laminating machine. I don't know if that's needed but I like to do it. And then I have everything done that I had on my list. So I made these page markers, two smaller ones, two with either a top or a bottom tab, three with the side tab. Then I had my new nice dividers with wider tabs so that I can see them more easily. And then a new weekly tab which I actually made smaller than the one that I had previously. Then there is my <laughs> page lifter try and then I just put these new nice dividers now in my planner. So do you make your own page lifters and dividers and do you have a tip for me? How do you punch the holes in anything? thicker than just paper. Any new tips and tricks are always warmly welcome.
If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Next week, I'm going to show you my newest setup in my personal rings. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.